How's it going? Before we get into the video, I just want to say thanks a lot for the positive response from the first performance guide. If you have watched it, you should have a very nice TF2 setup and we'll be continuing on from this, focusing on getting the max FPS you can get, and some other tweaks you might want to try. You can still follow this guide on a good PC if you want 250 FPS. I will just indicate with a potato on screen if the setting is unlikely to improve performance on a good PC. If you downloaded my custom folder from the last video, you should delete PREC and I will show you how to use the in-game demo recorder later. So I did a lot of benchmarking lately because I wanted to know if Master Config was the real deal, and it is. When we look at this chart, we can see that the smoothest experience can be had on Master Config Low. I benchmarked this with a new Bad Water demo and a program called Frame X that records the frame times. Link in the description if you want to try it. If we only looked at the average FPS, we would think that the toaster config is better for my PC than the Comanglia high quality config. But the minimum FPS was around the same, so there definitely could be people out there making their games look bad for no reason. If you're wondering which master config preset to use, I've benchmarked each one to help tell the difference in smoothness. If you want the best quality to performance like I do, you can use the low preset and make a modules mod that turns ragdolls, gibs, models, textures or whatever you really want back on. Everything you need and nothing you don't. Switching over to the master config low preset provides a slight FPS boost compared to the config we created in the first guide at the cost of worse lighting and models. I measured only an 8% boost in average FPS on my PC, but if yours is struggling to run TF2, it can make a massive difference. First, go and delete any master comms preset files you may have in the custom folder. In the first guide, we used the high preset, so delete that. If you have my modules mod, go in and delete the modules file in there. We're going to make a new one. Select the low preset on the website, you can customize it if you like, just say you want ragdolls, you can turn them on here. I recommend turning match HUD off and just press tab instead. When you're done, click the download and don't forget to download the customizations if you made some changes. Drag the files into custom, but for the modules file it needs to go in a config slash user folder like this. It's a good idea to delete the .cache files when you update mods. I'm pretty sure they can cause a game crash. When you launch your game, it will look like this now. If you add these three commands to your auto-exec, it makes the game look a lot clearer. They will be in the description for you to copy-paste. Adding these commands to the config didn't reduce the average FPS on my PC. If you don't already have an auto-exec, which is a config that runs every time you launch the game, you can easily make one by going to your custom folder. Make a folder called My Game Settings or whatever you want. In there make a folder called CFG and in CFG make a folder called user. In user make a text file called autoexec. You need to enable file extensions and change it to a .cfg otherwise it won't work. Open it with a text editor and you can put game commands in here, one command on each line. It's also helpful to put echo quotes my config run down the bottom of the file. This will leave a message in console if it's applying to your game. Don't forget to save the file after you edit it. Now we're going to run the game in DirectX 8. Pause and read if you would like to know about the upsides and downsides of doing this. We go to the Steam library, right click TF2, go to properties and then launch options, add dash DX level 81 with no spaces like this. Then go to launch TF2, it will change the resolution but we can change it back here. Then we need to close the game and remove the launch option, otherwise you can get issues with alt tabbing, and it runs so much better in the benchmark. In the description there will be a link to the toaster version of the no explosion smoke mod. To install it you just put the file in custom, make sure to remove any other no smoke mods because you can't have two of the same file. Then when you get in game, the explosions will have much less particles which should help FPS. The next thing we can do if you have a really weak graphics card is lower the resolution. Back when I had a laptop with integrated graphics I used to do this, and it helps a lot. 
Now you could use the lower resolution in the video options, but it's possible to go even lower than that with custom resolutions. To make a custom resolution you must first take note of what hertz your monitor can display up to. For me it's 240 but on most monitors they do up to 60. Download this program called Custom Resolution Utility, it should work on any computer. Open up CRU, you can add a resolution and enter the width, height and hertz. Then go OK and add another one in case you want to try going even lower. Then go OK and double click Restart 64. If you get a black screen for too long after doing this, press the F8 key on your keyboard. Otherwise you should be able to go to display settings, advanced properties, list all modes, and scroll till you find the custom resolutions you just made. You should be able to find them in the in-game video options now. Yes it is going to be a little harder to see with less pixels, but if your graphics chip is the bottleneck, this is definitely worth doing. It also makes the fonts look epic. You should probably benchmark before and after doing this to see how much it helps. While we're on this topic I might as well show you how to increase the FOV higher than 90. Just use custom resolution utility to make a res with a very wide width when compared with the height. In this example I'm using 1920 by 720 and it shows up in game. It's pretty cool but it does have black bars and your FPS will be much worse because of the tons of rendering it takes to use an angle this wide. If you like turning view models off there's this really good mod called Yetrium's Competitive View Models. It's very well made so I don't need to tell you how to use it, you just turn checkboxes off for weapons you don't want to see. And yes, on a toast you might gain 3 more frames having view models off, so that's nice. It even works in the in-game competitive matchmaking which forces the view model FOV. A really good use case for this in my opinion would be to hide scatter guns to improve your scout aim. I wish there was an option to hide specific rocket launches like the direct hit because the view model is massive, but I guess it's not possible. Also it won't hide the dead ringer or go out of sync when your weapon runs out of ammo and automatically switches. In the last video I mentioned how more HUD elements drawn on screen can reduce the FPS, so using a custom HUD that is very simple can actually make the game run slightly better. I'm going to show you how you can find and remove any HUD element you want to make your HUD more optimised. Load a single player map, in this example I'm going to remove the class icon in the bottom left. In the console enter svcheats1 and vgui underscore draw tree1. Then a box should pop up, enable highlight selected and go through the list until you find the HUD element. Take note of its name, the element has to be on screen for it to show up on this menu. I found it as you can see it is being highlighted when I click on HUD player class. Then you can usually find that name in your HUD's resource and UI folders. If you have a custom HUD like Ray's HUD, the file would already be there. But in my case, I needed to download the default HUD using a program called GCFscape. Once you open the file, you usually only need to set the XPOS of the top code block to 9999 and the visible and enabled to zero as well. Save the file and reload the HUD and TF2 with the HUD underscore reload scheme command. The HUD element should disappear. If it's not removed then you need to undo the changes you have made to the HUD and try something else. Maybe message our discord community for help. A lot of computers but mostly laptops due to their compact design can get overheated quite easily. And when your computer is getting too hot it will lower its power and clocks in order to save itself from damage. I'm running two free programs here called Cinebench and CPUID Hardware Monitor to stress the CPU on all cores and monitor the temperature and clocks. As you can see here my CPU got over 85 degrees C. This is past the point of where your CPU will think about slowing down. And it did. It dropped to 4067 megahertz. When we can see here that it was capable of up to 4341 megahertz. 
The more megahertz you have on your CPU, the more FPS you will have in TF2. When I google what Cinebench score the AMD 3300X can get, it shows 2612, which is a little higher than the 2108 I just got because of poor cooling. You can improve the cooling by clearing some dust out of your PC with some compressed air or a leaf blower, and by increasing the airflow with some fans. It probably wouldn't overheat in TF2 because it uses much less cores, but it's worth running hardware monitor in the background for one of your matches to see if the max temperature of your CPU or your GPU gets to over 85. If you've ever played old Quake games, you may have noticed how freaking smooth the FPS feels. And that's because they run at a stutter-free 250 FPS. So for TF2, there is an in-game FPS cap you can change, but it seems to have issues keeping a consistent frame rate, as you can see here. There is, however, an external program we can use to get consistent frame times in TF2. It's the same program I'm using to display this frame time graph. It's called RTSS. I recommend trying an FPS cap with RTSS of whatever your monitor hertz is, plus 10, and playing on TR Walkway to see if it feels smoother or looks clearer. It does for me, but the effect probably isn't noticeable on a lot of monitors. This won't help the FPS drops though, unfortunately, if you are dropping below the cap it's still inconsistent. If you are dropping FPS because of power and overheating, this could actually help. Also, you might be able to add a custom resolution with the hertz set to one higher than your monitor is rated at. If it displays correctly, you can continue raising the hertz by one until the monitor can't display that signal anymore. Then go back one or two hertz and use that. I used to have my 60 hertz monitor running at 66 hertz with no issues. I should have used a 76 RTSS cap with that, it could have helped with consistency. With an RTSS cap, you can get the smoothness of having VSync on, but without the delay. However, it won't remove screen tearing. There's actually a way to remove tearing without the delay. I think you have to cap slightly below the refresh rate and enable VSync. Link in the description to a guide on that. Just a few small things before I end the video. If you run Discord while playing, you should disable the in-game overlay. If you have Mumble, there's an overlay to disable on that too. If you want to record demos, go to the bottom of the advanced options, here's the settings I use. Or copy my commands from the description and add to your auto exec to record all your matches automatically. Demos actually do take up some hard drive space after a year of playing, so be aware of that. If you are getting less than 60 FPS too often, I recommend you play jump maps in MGE. Basically any map that's open with many players running around is going to drop your FPS the most. You can also play sixes and you will get better FPS because there's only six people on each team. It's all about the minimum FPS, also known as the 0.1% lows. And you can make the minimum FPS higher by turning graphics off or getting a faster CPU. You can overclock your CPU by going into the BIOS, that helps a lot. If you don't have a CPU that can overclock, you can at least maybe go into the BIOS and set the frequency to a constant speed, which I think could make the frame times more consistent. Also, what the heck happened to the No Unusual Effects mod? I hate unusuals! Well, two videos about FPS is probably enough for now. I might make some simple class-specific guides next. What do you think I should do? Oh, <laughs> <laughs>